Hi, I'm Lucy and this is project number three, Mail for CS50's web development with Python and JavaScript course. Within this project, I created a single page application which allows users to send, receive and do other functions related to emails without reloading the page. If I click the compose button at the top of the page, I'm taken to a form which allows me to send a new email. If I first try to send an email to an email address that does not exist in the database, and then if I click send email, I'm presented with a validation which tells me that this email address does not exist. If I instead try to send an email to someone that does exist in the database, as I click send email, I am taken to the user's sent inbox. In the background, I'm performing a post request using JavaScript to send the email to the user. As you notice during this process, the URL has not changed as this is a single page application. The email that I just sent is presented at the top of the page as the emails are ordered in reverse chronological order. If we click on the buttons for inbox, sent and archived, it will load the appropriate mailbox and there are a number of actions that are happening in the background. Each time I click one of these buttons, I am making a GET request to request the emails for that particular mailbox. This request returns the latest emails and the page is displaying the emails ordered in reverse chronological order. Each email is rendered in its own individual box and it displays who the email is from, the subject line and the email's timestamp. For the inbox, we have a little bit of additional styling. Unread emails are displayed with a white background and bold text, and red emails are displayed with a grey background. Clicking on an email takes the user to a view where they can see the content of that email. In the background, I'm making a GET request to request the email using JavaScript. This page shows the sender, the recipients, the subject, the timestamp, and also the body of the email. If we go back to inbox, and if I try to open an unread message, remember an unread message is one that's displayed with a white background. If I try to open this message and then return to the inbox, you can see that this email is now marked as read. This is because I have done a put request in the background using JavaScript to update this email to be read. When viewing an inbox email, the user is presented with a button that allows them to archive the email. If I click this button, the email will be archived and the inbox is loaded. If I now go to the archived inbox, you can see the email that I just archived. If I click any email within the archived inbox, you will see that I'm presented with a unarchive button. If we click this button, it will unarchive the email and also load the user's inbox. If we try to view an email that's within the sent inbox, you will see that there is no archive button. When viewing an email, the user can also see a reply button that lets them reply to an email. If I click this button, the user is taken to an email composition form. It's a little bit similar to what we've seen before, except the recipient is pre-populated with the sender of the original email. The subject line is pre-populated with the subject of the original email plus re, and the body is pre-populated with the original text of the email and also a line that provides the original timestamp of the original email. So if I type a reply and click send, my sent inbox is now loaded with the email that I just sent. If I try to reply to an email that already has re in the subject line, you can see that I don't have something that is like re re holiday plan as I have built the logic in order to make it work in this way. And finally, the website is completely responsive. 